Hello everybody and welcome back to Turning Tuesday. Today we are back on the metal lathe because I need to make more of these little metal thingies that I made back in episode 13. I haven't disclosed what they actually are yet, but uh, yeah, I need a few more of them. So let's get going. So last time I made these things was the first time I actually tried doing it and I've made a ton more since then and I've got slightly quicker at the process. The reason I'm showing it to you today is because I want the engineers out there, those of you watching or those of you that just have a basic idea of how to use a metal lathe, I want you to look at my process and tell me how I can improve it, how I can make it quicker, how I can make it more accurate so I can batch these things out more efficiently. So I'm trying to make these out of stainless steel and I'm using 303 stainless steel. I did try and do it with 316 at one point, which was just horrible to try and work. I found that it got very hard as I was working it and yeah, it just wasn't nice. So 303, is the one that I'm going for at the moment. So I'm gonna be turning this sort of shape out of this bit of metal and I want this area here to be 15 millimeters long and this area here to be 20. This has to be six millimeters in diameter. This has to be nine millimeters. So I'm gonna start by flushing off the end of it and making it nice and flat. So I've got a parting tool in here at the moment, which is what I used to separate the material last time, obviously. So I'll probably just use this one with the 95 degree head on it. Okay, I've got this running at about 400 RPM. All right, so that final pass has been taken, so I'm gonna retract this back so that cutter isn't engaged whatsoever. Then on the cross slide, without letting the handle actually move, I'll spin it round so it's 0 0.5 millimeters shy of zero. And then by turning the handle, then that should move the whole carriage 0.5 millimeters across that way and it's on zero. So then that should give me a final skimming pass. So now the cross slide is at zero and this thing has just cut at zero as well. So if I move that forward, there we go. So yeah, that cutter has just cut at zero. So as I said, on this little thingy, I want this bit to be 15 millimeters long. So with this moving five millimeters for every 10 that I move on here, if I move that round to 30, that should have moved the cross slide across 15 millimeters. Now what I've started doing on these thingies, this isn't an example of it, but I've created a six millimeter diameter and then I've started reducing that down to about five millimeters and then back up to nine, effectively creating a little channel where this unthreaded material is. And I'm doing that with the parting tool, which you'll see a little bit later on. But seeing as I'm cutting that groove, it means that I should only need to turn this to, I don't know, what's that? That'd be 14 millimeters. If I stop it two indexes short of 30, <laughs> I don't really know what the terms are here. If I stop it at 28 on here, then that should mean that the cross slide has traveled across 14 millimeters. And to do this quickly and accurately, I'm engaging this lever here, which engages the half nuts, which is used for threading. And it moves the cross slide across pretty quick, but seeing as I'm not looking for like a finished surface on this area here, then I don't really mind if it looks a little bit rough. What it is doing though, is getting the job done quickly. And I've got tungsten tooling here, so it is cutting through it pretty easily. I do have the option of using this lever, which seems to move the cross slide more slowly and therefore get a better finish. But for speed, I'm using this one. So what I normally do here is start off by trying to get the entire thing to nine millimeters because that's gonna be the diameter of this top bit. And as soon as I've got that, that's where I start forming the six millimeter area. So what are we at at the moment? Currently at 9.98. So in fact, if I take a skim first, that will give me a better idea as to where this forwards and backward movement is actually located. So we'll probably go about there. Okay, so I've taken my first cut and I've zeroed it at 20 because that was the nearest indication. So 9.8, which means I need to take off 0.8 millimeters, which means I need to move this in 0.4. 
to take off 0.4 from the radius, therefore taking 0.8 from the diameter. I got that wrong in the last video. So it's on 20 now. That means I need to move it round to, that'd be 20. I need to move it round to 40. Now I'm not gonna do that in one hit. I'll move it to 30 to start with and take off 0.2. Nine point one four, so I need to take off point seven now. So that'll be one, two, six, seven. Yes. And for this one, I'll probably do the slower feed rate. So I'll move this lever down, and there we go. So I'll maybe get a better finish on this one. You also get these cool little ringlets come off of this one. It's just slowly feeding out of there. should now be 8.89, damn, <laughs> it's too small. Why has that happened? I should still get away with that, but, mm, okay. So it's 0.1 under, now that's not the end of the world. That is, from my experiments, that is within tolerance, but yeah, okay. But yeah, that's difficulty number one that I'm encountering quite often. When I take down that diameter, even though I'm now taking the radius into account, it's still, it's still not accurate on that final pass. And I don't know if that's because I'm swapping between engaging the half nuts and then using that slower feed rate and like alternating between them. Does that change the tolerances? I don't really know. But as you saw in that example, if I want to take off, let's say 0.14 of a millimeter, I move it in 0.7. So then it takes 0.7 off either side of that diameter and therefore it should take it down 0.14. But in this case, it's gone under. So if you have any reasons for that, let me know. Anyway, so now I want to take down this area to 0.6 millimeters. So I should be able to move that into wherever it was before. It was there. That should be my, yep, that was the pass I just took. So because I'm not being accurate with this, I'll move it around to zero for now. Then, okay, that's all fine. And then if I move this slide to zero, should mean that that's right on the corner. Cool. All right, so I'll probably move it in, I don't know, 0.2 of a millimeter. Start it up and then engage the fast travel. And I'm watching for this to go around to 30, which means I'm taking off 15 millimeters along the length. Oh wait, no, sorry, I'm stopping it shy of 30. So about there, back. I'll take off a little more this time, engage. Stop, finish it up by hand, back. And I'm just gonna keep doing this to take it down to that diameter. Okay, so I've taken that stem bit down to six millimeters and I figured that out by, this was zeroed at nine millimeters when I took down that original diameter. So to take it down to 0 0.6, you go 20, 40, 60, 80, one millimeter, taking off the radius, 120, 1 1.4, 1.5. So taking off 1.5 either side should take it down to six millimeters if we started with a nine millimeter diameter. It seemed to have worked anyway. So at this point, I will take this tool out of the tool post and I will swap it out for a parting tool. Now I've changed the high speed steel for this. In the previous video, I was using a tungsten tipped parting tool, but I have just chipped the end out of that. And it just looks like a cornflake now. It's absolutely mullered. I'm finding that the high speed steel one is working a lot better. So then to create that channel and to part this off at the correct length, what I'm doing is getting the parting tool, zeroing it on the bottom of that stem sort of thing. So doing that, changing this background to zero there we go so now that dial is stopping on zero down there i don't think the camera can see it it's quite dark sorry this video is a bit slap dash i just want to get this right so if i move that round so it hits the thing there it should hit it as soon as this bit down here gets to zero which it has it's sort of stopping there so in theory if i back that off i can then travel this across one two three 
And that's now moved across 15 millimeters and I will be able to take that final skim and create that channel that is slightly smaller than the six millimeter diameter of this area. And it will also take a little bit out that nine millimeter area because I stopped this shy of it. I stopped it at about 14 millimeters across. So it's gonna give me a nice crisp edge on the bottom of this nine mil section. Put some of the good stuff on there. I'm finding this um, tough cut stuff to be quite smoky when it gets hot as well. If anyone has better solutions, then let me know. Okay, that looks good. So now to create that 20 millimeter section on the top, what I need to do is move this bottom one round. Let's get that in focus. I need to move it around five millimeters, 10 millimeters, 15, 20, but then that is 20 to the left-hand side of the parting tool, which will mean by the time I part this off, it will be shorter. To account for that and make sure that it's 20 millimeters to the right-hand side, of the parting tool. I need to measure the width of it, which is 2.5. So then I've got to move this across a further 2.5 as well. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, or sorry, 2.5. That should be right there. So then that should be 20 millimeters from this side of the parting tool to the bottom of this, not 20 millimeters from this to the left-hand side of the parting tool. Let's part it off and I'll see. Go and give it a little dip in my waterstone pond to cool it off. All right, and then after that, I am creating a M6 thread using a die by hand. I know it's possible to do this in a lathe, but I haven't really got the equipment to mount it in there or in fact, have any idea as to how to actually do it. I feel like this method's pretty quick, but yeah, not sure really. And there we go, there's the finished piece. Uh, it started slipping in the vise as I was cutting that thread onto it. So I've ended up getting these sort of track lines around it, which uh, I haven't had before. Probably just means the vise wasn't tight enough. And also I get this little like nub on the end of it as well when I'm parting it off. And also when I'm flushing off the other end as well. And I'm pretty sure that's because the cutting tool on the lathe is cutting a little bit below center, which means it can't get rid of that final little bit in the middle there. And the only way I can think of fixing this is to put like a little shim or something underneath here to lift that cutter up a tiny bit. But if anyone has any better solutions to that, then please let me know. So there was obviously quite a bit of talking in that, which meant progress was a bit slow. So what I'm gonna do now is time-lapse the entire thing, and I'll let you know how quick I'm actually making these things. And then you can let me know if that's like an acceptable time to make something this simple, or if I'm making it too overcomplicated and there's lots of shortcuts I could take. So yeah, I'm gonna time it. I'm not gonna rush anything. I've kind of got the process in my head now. I know how it works, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'll get this set back. So I've got enough fit sticking out. I do apologize about the lighting in this area. Uh, this is just all natural light and it's a bit of a cloudy day today. So the sun keeps going behind clouds and then coming out and it's changing the exposure of the entire shot. So this time-lapse might be a little bit flashy, but uh, yeah, I apologize about that. So let's get the timer going. Okay, so including tool change around, let's do the whole process. I will see you on the other side. There you go, from a 10 millimeter bar of 303 stainless steel, it's taken me 11, well, 12 minutes to create this thingy, which has an M6 thread on the end, nine mil, six mil, 15, 20 millimeters in diameter. 
I don't know if that's a good time. I feel like that's pretty much what I average at the moment. Sometimes it's quicker. I felt like that one was a little bit slow, but yeah, there we go. Okay, so that is it for Turning Tuesday this week. Sorry, this one was another quick one. It's Bank Holiday Monday today. I'm just getting as many little jobs done in the workshop as I can because it's not often I get a Monday in here. So it's a catch up day for me, but yeah, as I said, if any of you have any suggestions on how to make this process quicker, more accurate, more efficient, whatever, please, please let me know in the comments. I wanna be able to batch these things out pretty quickly and have them finished to a good standard as well. So yeah, if you liked the video, don't forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.